Mikrofon da vorne, auf keinen Fall, aber kann ich würde auch keine Brille nehmen. So, 
Talmud says in the purport to this verse, uh, he says, first of all, he says it is very beneficial to chant the names Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda before chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Because by chanting these two holy names, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, one immediately becomes ecstatic. And if he then chants the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, he becomes free from offenses. <laughs> so I don't know how many people actually immediately become ecstatic and fear of the problem. <laughs> Anyway, so that's just suggested, first of all, before you, every round, you see at least say, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. And then, then Prabhupada goes through the, the, uh, uh, these ten offenses. Uh, uh, and, 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 uh, So the first offense of the last two great personalities who are engaged is distributing the holy name of the Lord. And then he quotes uh, in Chaitanya that uh, one cannot distribute the holy names of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra unless he is empowered by the Supreme Personality of God. And therefore, one should not criticize or blaspheme a devotee who is thus engaged. So, here, the, this has come, so the, these ten offenses actually come from the Padma Purana. And so this first one, Satam Ninda, Satam means uh, the devotees. Uh, 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 to blaspheme devotees who have dedicated their lives to chanting the holy name of the Lord. The holy name who is identical with Krishna will never tolerate such blasphemous activities. It actually says in the Bengali uh, or the Sanskrit matter uh, that uh, this is the Paramount Akhavadam, the greatest of them. There's several greatest of them, you see where it was. So, Prabhupada leaves it out of the, 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 the translation. So, that's the first of them, the blasphemed devotees. Uh, second of them, uh, to consider the names of Lord Shiva or Lord Brahma to be on an equal level with the holy name of Lord Vishnu. Third offense uh, is very simple. The ruler of Ajna. Uh, of Ajna, a material conception of the Guru, which Prabhupada translates here as to disobey the orders of the spiritual master or to consider him an ordinary person. Uh, the Guru is the representative of Krishna and uh, is uh, therefore to be honored uh, in that way. Just like uh, if an ambassador uh, uh, goes to another country and the ambassador is, is treated badly, then that's an insult to the whole country or to the king in the old days. So similarly, uh, this uh, the guru of is, is uh, a risky uh, endeavor. Undertaking. The fourth offense, Shruti Shastra Vindanam, to blaspheme the Vedic literature, the literature is in pursuance of the Vedic version, Shastra and Shruti, these two kinds of uh, Vedic literature. Then, Arthavada, to give some interpretation on the holy name of the Lord. Some people say, yeah, it works because you're actually controlling your breathing. Various other theories, how uh, may have this. Uh, so you don't. Uh, the, the potency of the holy name is because Krishna and Krishna's name are the same, and therefore uh, Krishna is accessible. Before I was.
was at MIT. Uh, I was in uh, uh, graduate religious studies from the university. And uh, uh, I had one professor who said uh, that the real question isn't whether God exists, but is God available? It's whether God is available. And at the time I thought, well, you know, that sounds reasonable because if God exists and is not available, what difference does it make? And if God is available, then that takes care of the existence question. And I had that in my mind, and then uh, a few years later, I ran across the Bodhis chanting Hare Krishna in the streets of the city, and went up and talked to them, and went to the temple and began chanting. And then I got to say, oh, this is how God is available. Krishna and Krishna's name are the same, and so that way Krishna is immediately accessible in the form of sound. Uh, sound is, is the subtlest of the elements, and, and, uh, and so also very powerful. And so that way, and very portable, you can carry it everywhere. You can, <laughs> so this is very useful to have God be available in this way in the form of sound. And because Krishna and Krishna's name are ultimately the same, uh, when the name is chanted more and more purely, you can expect, you can experience the presence of Krishna in his name, which is the process that we undergo, chanting while trying to give up offenses. Uh, another uh, offense, uh, sixth offense, to Arinama Kalpani, to consider the glories of the holy name as imagination. You've been brainwashed or something. <laughs> Those people can't appreciate it, so they don't understand how it works. The seventh offense uh, that is uh, to commit sin, Papa, on the strength of the holy name. The things of the Hare Krishna mantra can counteract all sinful reactions and one therefore may go on with his sinful activities. And at the same time, time chant the Hare Krishna mantra to neutralize them is the greatest offense of the lotus feet of Hare Now that greatest offense is in Prabhupada's translation, but it's not actually in that the Sanskrit text, but the man who wants to say this is the greatest one. You, you, can't, you can't enlist the holy name in your sinister purposes. Oh, I'll just go out and commit some sinful activities, chant Hare Krishna, and it'll go away. It won't if you do it in that mood. You may commit a sinful activity, but then you should immediately regret it and try to rectify yourself. But if you use it for your own sinister purposes, then that's a very great offense. The sin on the string of chanting is a short version of that offense. Uh, the eighth offense to consider the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra to be one of the auspicious ritualistic mantras mentioned in the Vedas as fruitive activity. So there are many religious performances, Dharma, Vrata, uh, Tyaga, Akni, Yajna, uh, these things, Bhuta, uh, these things, that, that's a list there, uh, all those other auspicious activities of Dharma, Rata vows, Tyaga renunciation, Bhutas, sacrifices, all of these things uh, are uh, uh, ritualistic activities, and you should not think of the Holy Name as on the level of those, which are giving you pious credit. Then, interestingly enough here, it says, Tapikramada, which is not translated here. Kramada means craziness. The Prabhupada translated as inattentive. But he'll list it again as a number of things in his purport. Uh, ninth offense, it is an offense to teach the glories of the holy name of the Lord to the faithless. Uh, one who is Ashunbati, who doesn't want to hear. May we give it to everybody 
somebody, but if somebody is really inimical, doesn't want to hear it, puts their hands over their ears, you know, uh, That would be an offense against the Holy Name. Then the tenth offense here. If one has heard the glories of the transcendental Holy Name of the Lord, but nevertheless uh, continues in a materialistic concept of life, thinking I am this body and everything belonging to this body is mine, a humble and does not show respect and love for the chapter in the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, that is an offense. And then, Apiti uh, Pramadaha, it is also an offense to be inattentive while chanting. Uh, so it's funny when it says 10 offenses and then list 11 like that, how does this come about? This is how Prabhupada translates them in detail from the Padma Purana, a little different from the one that is said in the temple in, 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 in the morning. Uh, but uh, this offense, which is, by the way, Api Pramadaha, if you think, by the way, is also an offense. Uh, we have uh, uh, a very nice book by uh, Bhakti Vimalatakura called the Harinan Sintamani. Well, he goes through all the offenses and explains them in some detail. There are, there are several translations by Iskand devotees, but the one that's the best is by Bhagavan which is available in electronic form on Amazon.com. If you want your own copy uh, of it, with uh, uh, Bhakti Vimalatakura's uh, commentary translated here and there into, into English. So, uh, I want to read a little bit from, from that chapter, not the whole chapter, but uh, because Bhattacharya Thakur makes this very interesting observation. Uh, and, and so, by the way, Bhattacharya Thakur is telling this story. He is relating a conversation between Sanatana Goswami and Haridas uh, Now he wasn't there. <laughs> that was before his fourth time. But somehow or other, this is how he does it. Haridas spoke to Sanatana Goswami in Puri and Gopal Bhatta. When you travel to South India, you talk the importance of uh, Oh no, this is the Pagas Thakur, excuse me, he's speaking to Lord Chaitanya. And he says that to those to the Sanatana Goswami and Gopal Bhatta, when you, this is Lord Chaitanya, travel to South India, you talk the importance of performing one's chanting without inattention. Inattention is counted as one of the aparadas, aparadas in defense. Even if one successfully overcomes all the other offenses in chanting, and one is chanting continuously, love of God may not come. One should know that the reason for this is that one is committing the offense known as tamada or inattentive, inattention. This offense will block progress to prema. He says, pramada means madness, but here it means inattention. The meaning is inattention or carelessness. And then there's this sentence, it is from this offense that all other offenses spring. So when it says it be an apipramada, it's, it's like the sort of root. It is from this offense that all other offenses spring. And then it mentions three kinds of inattention indifference or no attention, laziness and distraction. So here this is the one, especially while you're chanting Japa, to deal with this offense. Uh, the laziness or, or uh, it, it, it is to put off your job until it's really, really late at night and you go Sometimes you do it, sometimes you don't. Because 
you're taking that out, and now is I'm going to chant 16 rounds a day. So to keep that vow, that uh, uh, takes care of indifference or laziness. And doing, when you do do that, you try to pay attention. And it's distracting, distracting the other objects. Uh, we used to call this radar job when I mean, you're walking along and speaking to birds, standing and walking the street, going, thinking of other things and uh, things like that. So the thing is, there's, there's three kinds of chanting. Offensive, pure, and the intermediate stage is clearing. So the pure stage, we cannot, most of us, get to immediately. The offensive stage, that's easy. So the clearing stage of chanting is chanting while trying to become free from offenses. And then of those offenses you're trying to become free from while you're chanting, this pramada, inattention, is the one to deal with. So you can chant the holy name and get so many good ideas. Once I invited one of my professors after I became a devotee to the temple, and, and I saw him in the, in, the, in the kirtan. In the kirtan, he was uh, seemed to be chanting and clapping and everything. And I said, uh, "Oh, Professor Burke, how did you like the chanting?" He says, "Oh, it's great! I got so many good ideas." <laughs> so you can. <laughs> You can uh, chant like that, get so many good ideas with your mind wandering, free associating, thinking so many things. Uh, so why do you chant? So, so the, the, the clearing stage is when the mind wanders, you bring it back. When it wanders again, you bring it back. This is the discipline. This is our yoga discipline, right? fixing the mind on the holy moon. And when you're chanting in a clearing stage, the pure name is not available. But what you get is called Nama Basa. Uh, uh, it means a reflection of the Holy Name. Nabasa means the projection of light into darkness. So you don't see the sun, but you see the sun rays. The sun rays are Nabasa. So this is Nama Basa. It's not uh, Nama Bharat, or not the Shuddha Nam, but in between. Near Nama Vasa, you'll read about this in the Chaitanya Church, and we can, near Nama Vasa destroys all sinful reactions and brings one to the platform of liberation. And then the pure name gives Krishna Prema. So this is this is a, something of a controversy about this in the Chaitanya Charge, I mean, uh, but this is uh, 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 Nama Vasa. Uh, so here, Bhakti Thakur, Kori, Hari Thakur. By good fortune, after getting faith, the Jiva will take up the name by chanting regularly, counting on a Tulsi Mala carefully. He will develop attraction for the name. However, until that attraction is actually developed, one must be very careful about how one chants. Naturally, the common man having attachment to material things will be attracted to these things even while chanting. Or chanting Japa daily, if his taste is elsewhere, he will show indifference to the name. His heart will not be absorbed in chanting the name, but in some material object. How can that benefit him? He may chant 64 rounds, counting strictly on his japa beads, but in his heart he has not received one drop of taste of the name. This indifference or apathy for the name is one type of inattention. In the heart of a materialist, it is unavoidable. But then if you uh, take shelter of the Vaishnavas uh, and become inspired by them, uh, and then you'll give that, that uh, fault up 
and the heart will get attraction for the name and become anxious for it. So this is uh, the British Health Association. Uh, he suggests that you, uh, with, with, with that, I mean, Tulsi chanting in front of Tulsi staying in British Association, the case for material logic will go. He says another remedy is to carefully chant in a room by oneself with the door locked or concentrate on the name by covering the eyes, ears, nose with a cloth, now we all have our masks, <laughs> or the light to prevent stimuli from the exterior. Carefully chanting in this way, an attraction or taste of the name will develop and indifference will be suppressed. And so anyway, he goes through the uh, different things of the, uh, the distraction. I suggest you uh, read this because we don't want to go on for too long. So then this chanting on the clearing stage, uh, that gives liberation. So this is simple enough. I mean, to me, Japa is really nice because it's a simple arena. In the simple arena, there's you, there's a holy name, and there's your mind. And that deal with it. The mind wants to wander, wants to go away. And the other thing about the mind that's interesting to remember is that from our, our mind came with us from our previous birth. When you change bodies, you don't, uh, 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 you know, uh, what Shakespeare calls shuffle off the mortal coil at, at death, you know. Uh, you only shuffle off the gross mortal coil, the gross body. The subtle body stays with you. Liberation means actually liberation from the subtle body. Uh, at the time of death, you're automatically liberated from the gross body. So now you have to become liberated from the subtle body. And, 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 and the, can, the holy name dissolves the subtle body of the living entity. So, what, so everything that's in there, you don't know what garbage you brought with you. You don't remember your past life, at least much of it anyway, but they're junk in there. You're born with different desires, people have different ambitions. You may notice all the materialists have got their mind to tell them to do one thing or another thing, a different attraction or that attraction. All that is brought with you. So you don't want to continue that, but you want to be able to get from the universe from the subtle body. And so that's why this chanting, at least from the clearing state, that much we can do. And then you're showing Krishna you're really interested in a relationship. And Krishna, you know, he becomes attracted. He, 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 yeah, he really is interested in a relationship. Let me give him a little more of myself to him. That's how this relationship develops. And what we're doing is trying to develop uh, this, uh, this relationship. So that's what... Uh, that's what one should really do in order to advance in Krishna consciousness. And now, with the, with the accepting of the vows uh, and, and uh, accepting a, a spiritual name, uh, which means all the names in service of Krishna, one form or another, a servant of a great devotee of Krishna, uh, this will uh, give you a big boost. Uh, I was really surprised I, 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 when I got initiation. I was told that the real initiation is second initiation, and this is just encouragement. And I wasn't going to expect very much. And then when I, I got, got initiated, we all went up to see Kalpani there in the country for a while. I was in, 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 in New York City. And I didn't even hear very well. I mean, I think he came to Papa and handed his the keys and he says, your name is Oliver. And I couldn't really hear him very well. Uh, and I wasn't familiar with his accent that much because he didn't have so many tapes of his, his there was no cassette page. Yeah, you know, to hear a lecture from Papa to Park. So I, I sat down and I said to the guy next to me, what did he say my name was? And the, the guy said, Go Vinda Swamu. <laughs> 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 Is that what it was? 
doesn't sound quite right. You know? <laughs> then finally, you know, uh, after the ceremony was over, my wife got initiated at the same time. And he said to me, your name is Ruru, that means like sunshine, he said to me, it means like sunshine. And so that, the Govinda Swaroo didn't fit with that either. So then uh, I, I asked uh, uh, the temple president, what was, uh, what did you say my name was? And he said, Ravindra Swaru. I said, oh, not Ravindra Swaru. He said, he said, no, Ravindra Swaru. And then I, during the, the day uh, I was at the New York temple, the Bodhi says, what, what's your name? And I said, Ravindra Swaru. And they all said, well, somebody else had that name first. Or somebody else had that name before. I said, oh, who was that? Oh, just some crazy hippie. <laughs> <laughs> he left the movement, you know, and to read a little bit about him in the, uh, uh, oh, I'll be on Anyway, uh, the, the, the name is the name of Krishna or Krishna's servant, and, and uh, that shows that your connection with Krishna is there. So now, you can come up to the, <laughs> the camera. <laughs> or I guess Dina Sharma has a piece. Or... Huh? Yes, I'm coming. Yeah. So first I have to ask you, uh, what are the four areas of the or something? Yeah, take a big place and sit. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, come over and play a place. Yeah, I can't see you on the screen. Thank you. 